At a little over three feet tall and just 75 pounds, she's no hunter, but supplements her diet by scavenging from the scraps left by predators. Like a modern chimp, she uses rocks as a basic implement to break open bones for their rich marrow protein. But the predators she owes her free lunch to are never far away. You've got saber-toothed cats, you've got giant hyenas, you've got hunting hyenas, a whole plethora of carnivores, very dangerous carnivores that we don't have anymore. And they would have all been eating or going after things like the tong shot or even uh, Tong's mother. Absorbed by the remains of a carcass, the mother has placed her child a short distance away in the shade of a tree. Her three-year-old is the size of an 18-month human infant and has no protection apart from its mother. She knows there are threats, but she's keeping one eye out for the child, like any parent would. They definitely would have cared for their children. I mean, you see chimpanzees as the most caring of parents. There's no reason to say that Tong wasn't cared for. The problem with the Tong child was it's probably just old enough and rambunctious enough that it was leaving its mother for stretches at a time. The mother is unaware her baby's wandered away until it's too late. There's no sight or smell of a predator in the undergrowth, but predators don't just exist on the ground. You've also got a threat from eagles. They've been documented to take human children up in Kenya to the age of six years of age. I mean, an eagle has a, these incredibly strong talons, greater, uh, it's a lovely but greater lift to weight ratio than an F-15 fighter jet. The child is unaware of the danger from above. The mother sees the eagle and the child in the same moment. But can't get to her baby quick enough. Tang's skull was found with eggshells and other broken skulls, typical of deposits found in eagle nests. A lot of the skulls, interestingly, have these V-shaped impressions from this eagle's beak going through, because preferentially they eat out the brain, very rich, nutritious source of protein. This small, defenseless creature is Raymond Dart's missing link. Valentine's Day, 1925, just two months after Tang Child first emerged from the rock. A week ago, Dart published a scientific paper claiming Tang as the missing link and unleashing a storm of controversy. Dart thinks he's got the missing link. But there's also this Piltdown specimen that matches what the scientific establishment thinks. Brain growth was thought to have driven human evolution, and Piltdown had a large brain and ape-like teeth. But Tong had the opposite, a small brain and human-looking teeth. The whole mix of different features that you find with the Tong child really is quite interesting. It's a whole reversal. It's more like an, a man-ape than an ape-man. And it's a complete different mix of features that the world hadn't seen and the world actually wasn't ready for. Have you seen Professor Dart? The biggest experts in this field all backed Piltdown. Any sort of voices of doubt were generally uh, just overridden by the authority of these people. Dart's publication directly contradicts the scientific establishment. Could anybody tell me where I can find Professor Dart? He sent it to London to be reviewed by the world experts. The same experts whose views he contradicts. And these so-called experts dismiss it because they've got their money on the other horse. 
he has one ally in his struggle for recognition. Dr. Robert Broom, like Dart, an anatomist and fossil collector. Broom has the reviews from London. Raymond, uh, Raymond uh, I thought you'd be interested in these. Some responses to your short paper in Nature. There's one there by Sir Arthur Keith. What does he have to say? Not very encouraging, I'm afraid. He places town in the same subfamily as gorillas. What? How? Well, he says here, the brain is clearly too small to be a human ancestor. The experts line up to condemn Dart's description of a fossil they've never seen. How can he know what's too small or too big? <laughs> How can he possibly claim that a human ancestor's brain had to be a particular size? What's his yardstick? Uh, a standard size bowler hat? What's, what's the matter with it, Robert? Do they think I'm making it up? So what went wrong for Raymond Dart? Wrong man, wrong place, wrong thing. He's the wrong man. He's an Australian. He's not part of the establishment. It's the wrong place. Southern Africa. Everyone's expecting another place, either Europe or Asia. It's the wrong thing. He calls it an ape. Everyone thinks it's an ape. Well, if it's an ape, where, is, where does it fit in the story? Tao is showing so many points of affinity with the gorilla and the chimpanzee that there cannot be a moment's hesitation in placing the fossil in this living group. How can he say that? I don't know. Smith Woodward dismisses the whole thing out of hand. He says that town certainly has... Sorry, old man. Dart has made probably one of the most remarkable discoveries of the 20th century, and the scientific establishment completely discounts it, discredits his find, and literally puts it in a box or a suspense account for 25 years. In the 1920s and 30s, the most widely read textbook on human origins does not even mention Dart's find. His work is not taught in universities. Dart had suffered an incredible amount. I mean, Dart was really put in kind of scientific obscurity. And it really is not until the late 40s that he starts again, once that tide of opinion starts to turn and shows that he was actually correct. It takes a quarter of a century of digging in South Africa's limestone caves to produce the evidence Dart needs. But by the late 1940s, a dozen fossils similar to Tong Child finally prove he was right. So what has become of Charles Dawson and his Piltdown Man? Forty years after it emerged as the prime contender for the missing link, the Piltdown fossils are examined scientifically for the first time. And finally revealed for what they always were, an elaborate hoax. There was embarrassment and puzzlement, uh, astonishment, disbelief in some cases, that this thing was not genuine. But I think for the greater world of science, uh, there was relief, particularly outside of Britain, because so many people by then had decided there was something peculiar about Pildown, even if they couldn't put their finger on it. At the Natural History Museum in London, scientists decide to apply some newly available chemical tests. But as soon as a sample is drilled from the jawbone, they notice something strange. A distinct smell of burnt flesh. This can only come from organic bone, not fossil. So the jaw cannot be more than a few thousand years old. And clear marks can be seen on the surface of the teeth. Scratch marks. Originally from a modern ape, they've been filed down to look human. The entire assemblage, stained to look old, is a forgery.